Everyone should be able to recall the mayhem going on at the beginning of the semester with the honor system. If you are still asleep from winter break, however, here's a little refresher. They posed a few revisions to the process, which included informer traction and the combination of the informer traction with the installment of trained and elected jurors. With these revisions, the Honor Committee hoped to target and fix persistent problems within the system. They focused on people's reluctance to report offenses, the motivation to lie to stay out of trouble, inconsistent random student jurors, the lack of confidence in the system, and unfair exoneration by use of reasonable doubt. Although they were able to pass the inform retraction segment with the vote of about 5,000 to 3,000, there is still the same amount of controversy within and skepticism about the honor system now as it was before the proposal. One portion of the system that no one seemed to bother, however, was the single sanction. Although they were able to pass the inform retraction segment with a vote of about 5,000 to 3,000, there is still the same amount of controversy within and skepticism about the honor system now as it was before the proposal. One portion of the state system and no one seemed to bother, however, was the single sanction of punishment. It also does not appear to line up with Thomas Jefferson's vision for this university, which is to establish a university on a plan so broad and liberal and modern as to be worth patronizing with the public support and be a temptation to the youth of other states to come and drink of the cup of knowledge and fraternize with us. However, the Honor Committee would rather emphasize more general quotes like this one found on the Stall Seat Journal that says nobody can acquire honor by doing what is wrong. As a result, they forfeit the vision of a broad liberal and modern culture as seen in the first quote when they preserve things like the single sanction of punishment, which is predominantly a conservative, irrational, and outdated concept. We tend to hold everything else at this university to some vision of Thomas Jefferson, so why are we not doing so with the system in which we are most distinguished? It makes very little sense to have the single sanction segment in general because of the fact that all offenses do not carry the same weight. It is not logical to punish all of them in the same manner. Many people, however, do not see this especially the alumni of UVA, like Jim Pettit, who graduated in 1969. His comments about the situation were as follows. As to the single sanction, I still favor it. Levels of dishonesty as well as levels of pregnancy do not exist. Either one was dishonest or not. This is a very ignorant thing to say. It's the equivalent of saying there should only be capital punishment or complete freedom for breaking a law. Opinions like Pettit seem even more ridiculous when you look at credible theories of appropriate punishment in criminology. For instance, the deterrence theory states that the certainty of punishment, proportional severity in punishment, and celerity after an offense are crucial in implementing successful deterrence from crime. The single sanction also enforces an elitist mindset among the students. It implies that everyone here is supposed to be perfect in regards to honor. This is an unrealistic expectation of the students, especially when they are under high, highly stressful circumstances and their judgment is impaired. This elitist mindset can be seen in statements like this one by Chris Neisler. It's very disheartening to see the university once again attempting to devalue the meaning of honor. The single sanction honor system is integral to the existence of the university, not to mention a source of pride. If students or faculty have a problem with it, they can go elsewhere. That air should not be encouraged or expected, but people like Scott Gillespie think that it's fundamental to be this way, as he states, the honor system should be held up as the ideal, that to which we strive for. It should not be watered down. Lowering the standards to which you strive only weakens the where you'll ultimately end up. Though Gillespie makes a great philosophical point that sounds highly motivational, he is still not considering the fact that the honor system affects real students' lives. It's not a perfect utopia. Therefore, it is also not wise to expect students to abide by a whimsical concept like this or for it to be able to dictate the fate of their futures. It is not in the best interest of the students to conform to the tradition of single sanction or punishment. Many students do not agree that it is the best way to go about administering punishment. 
We read articles from people like David Brooks is the organization kid and are criticized for simply conforming to the norms of things without critically thinking out the consequences. However, when we found fault in previous generations traditions and we decide not to conform, we're also criticized. It's as if we cannot win. It seems true that it's mostly the alumni of UVA that are angry about the attempts to revise the system. They look back nostalgically and are enraged that we do not want to undergo the same broken system. But if the students decide not to fix the system, then they will be neglecting the current student body of its deserved amendments. This would violate another one of Thomas Jefferson's visions of self-governance. The honor system needs a change that is not being addressed in the recent debate. It needs moderation. It needs flexibility. For some reason, people seem reluctant to call out this broken tradition and assign the blame that single sanction expulsion has rightfully deserved for the corruption of our honor system. If we had addressed this problem earlier, then we could have possibly avoided some of the problems that now seem impossible to fix. Students wouldn't be so hesitant to report other students if they knew that there would be an appropriate and well thought out punishment assigned. The pressure for students to lie to avoid expulsion and the present lack of confidence in the system would both diminish if the guidelines were to become more sophisticated. Who knows what other problems we could have avoided by making our honor system more flexible, starting with the elimination of the single sanction expulsion. It is never too late to make amends and tackle it, however. We must speak up as a passionate and conscientious student body first.